Why hello there, and welcome to Die Tonight Season 4. I'm Leroy in the Estate of Earthquakes. What an interesting name. I'm here with quite a number of good players from the Mega Meta Jump, and we're going to be trying out these new season changes and having fun. We are going to aim for a great town, like always, but we're going to just see how it happens. As you can see, I'm auto-searching in a depleted zone. Not useful, I know, but I will be moving on very shortly. As you can see, we have a fair number of decent players in this town. We have Token, Brandonshire, Dilt, Axin, Lexus, Fargo, Workshop, Redder, <laughs> hello Redder, Morindil, Freddy, Burgai, Opus, Miscamamem, Steven, 10011, Dictator, Japo, Tutu, Angron, Fudgy Cakes, Nilu, Genki, Astroid, Ricola, Samwise, Lil Marie, Laraye, Nixal, Tyrius, Codeine, Disc One, Jalful Amiga, Shashimis, The Docklet, Anorgamus, Repin, Figment 5, Balrock, Moles, Jade Dragon 87, and Loin. I apologise if I mispronounced anything there, but hey, not going to hang around here. Okay, before I start talking in detail about the Season 4 changes, let's get my uh, cat, so scratches a lot, to um, finish off these zombies. Now, he has claimed 15 zombies so far. He's getting a bit worn out. Hopefully, he's going to be able to uh, destroy these. Let's give him a go. Yep. That makes 16, 17, 18. Oh, I love you, Sir Scratches, a lot. Okay, he's going to have to go into early retirement and live happily at my house. What a very good kitty cat. Now, hmm, I'm going to have to take this duct tape with me, so bye-bye food ration. We can come pick you up a bit later. Update the maps, and then I'm going to head towards my equipped trench. As you might have noticed, I'm, uh, yes, I'm a survivalist. I've already used my um, action, yep, survival guide, using it for water, what else would you use it for? Very rare events where you'll have to use it for food, water is always the way to go. And yep, I'll uh, just move along. And yes, I think I've made a mistake, I should have moved south then, because I'm pretty sure there was a wrought iron there and I can build the wonky shopping trolley into a proper trolley but I'll be able to do that tomorrow that's no problem because I will be camping day one on the equipped trench what's interesting is here my chances are limited mm. the equipped trench does give you a nice bonus so let's just uh, activate all this like per usual update the map and back to me trench now, looking at the trench, optimal. That means I will not be dying tonight, and this trench is not upgraded. That's how good a survivalist is. But the camping features aside, a survivalist is awesome just for that water. That water really makes a big game changer. All right, but regardless, I'm going to drop all this stuff on the ground. Yes, I do have a water pistol and water ration just in case it was needed, but but Sir Scratches a lot has done everything I've needed him to do. 18 kills. Well done, mate. Well done. Okay, we might as well camp then. So, yep. Yeah. Optimal chances. No need to go for a tomb. Hide here for the night. And I'll be seeing you in the morning with a blueprint. A quick look at the map. As you can see the progress we've made so far. We're aiming to clear the southeast, getting rid of all these zombies, keeping our asses in check. That means we won't have to worry about the other sides. It's quite a sensible plan. We haven't found any of the new abandoned buildings yet. Hopefully they're not going to be somewhere stupid like all the way up here because that's just going to be utterly ridiculous. And I do want to show you guys how the buildings are so we're just gonna have to hope it's somewhere within a sensible reachable distance i do believe distant um town we have two of them yep okay then die tonight season four update 3.1 going underground now i don't want to talk too much about abandoned buildings because i have yet to actually go in one myself we're going to try and find one in this town rest assured taking a quick look at the help you'll be able to see that yep advanced exploration it's like a mini game with a timer it's quite interesting we want to know exactly how it works with the um with the oxygen levels, what weaponry you need, about the keys deep going further, what area scavengers can get to, and what the rewards are for doing it. So playing around with this will definitely be on our to-do list if we find one. <laughs> okay, what other updates do we have? Well, the construction projects have been reworked, so you'll find that you have more buildings to start with, 
fewer resources it's all interesting we're gonna take that as it comes and see what this season will actually do for us two new hero classes very important the technician and the survivalist the technician if we can just find it here he is yeah he comes with a handyman's tool belt and he'll be able to spend free construction points every day this is going to be a very decent hero class for those that simply do not have the time to play die tonight a lot they can contribute more and not feel so much like their hero class has been wasted they will also be able to make keys for the special abandoned buildings how much is this going to be needed we're going to be able to find that out in due time but I don't think we're going to need that many technicians per town this season. I shouldn't think a town should need more than five to be honest and that's just a rough guess. We'll see how it actually takes us. My big concern is to do with the survivalists. Now the survivalists are absolutely awesome purely because of the water. The more survivalists you have the less water you're going to need. The less times you're going to need to upgrade pump the more you can focus on other things. Survivalists can drink every day, that means you can go out on a full good scavenging run without worrying about your water rationing. Of course water is still going to be an issue for the rest of the town, but survivalists, especially with their camping and being able to camp on those buildings without fear of dying, maxing out the chances, means those much needed blueprints can be brought in and you can still keep as many people alive as possible. Personally I think you should have at least 10 survivalists per town. After 10 days that's about at least 50 water rations saved and a heck lot gained. Yes scavengers are still as important as ever especially with that new oxygen and the abandoned buildings. Guardians, I've heard that the guardians might have been buffed a bit I'm not too certain on that so let's get a bit of feedback on that but scouts are just as important however they can be used from residents with brother in arms. Tamers are just as important they can go out killing things as per usual bringing back other items doing what tamers do best i mean if you had about five tamers and they're taking the water rations that the survivalists would have used that means you can have an elite group of tamers going out every day clearing doing what they can do best making life much easier for everyone else i think those extra rations saved from the survivalist is a small price to pay for such greatness from the tamer side but at the end of the day you should play what you'd like to play with fun but a little organisation never hurt anyone. Enough bloody rambling, what else do we have? We have citizen escorts. It's a feature that you can set yourself to be escorted so you can effectively play the game without playing the game. Problem is you have to trust the person that's doing the escorting. So it's a bit risky but only heroes can do that and the general thought is that why would a person pay for the game just to grieve a bit? And yeah, so escort mode we haven't tried it yet but it does sound very interesting here <laughs> leave you to rot so you do have to have some trust personally I don't think I'd want to go have anyone use escort mode on myself unless I trusted them explicitly or I still had my heroic return just in case there may be a few iffy things to do with this like you know using heroic actions will somebody on escort mode be able to make a survivalist drink their water from their heroic power but it does provide another way of playing for those people who are just too inactive to get the fullness of the game yet they want to contribute as much as they can to the town. So this is going to be a very interesting mode to test out, especially if somebody gets trapped and they need a rescue but they can't get online. What else do we have? Yep, the evolution of a scavenger has been buffed for the new abandoned buildings. We're going to test that out to see exactly how good that makes the scavenger and how good the abandoned buildings are. And a load of bug fixes including the one being able to survive only using personal defences. Now after looking at a few attacks I'm not certain if this has been fully implemented. I mean will 10 people be able to survive just using 30 to 40 personal defence if they can get that much? It's going to be a very interesting thing to test and find out. But I can only imagine how boring would a town get if for example this town we had 10 survivalists and we managed to survive using that amount of defence. Oh look no water we're just spending the entire season 4 duration in this town. Yes, it's going to be a heck load of soul points and a lot of grief and flaming, but you know, you're effectively not playing the game for 3 months. That would be rather gut-wrenching. But that's all speculation. It probably has been fixed. It's going to be very interesting to test if you know you can get 10 people with that amount of defense. You're going to have to do a lot of personal chest upgrades with a lot of defensive items and getting those houses built up as soon as possible. Past the air raid shelter. Hmm. 
Anyway, I'm pretty sure I've missed one update, but you know, it's just not coming to mind. I wonder what it is. Oh, that's right, the meta cap has been removed. Hurrah! That's going to make a lot of people happy. A few people sad, but a lot of people happy. Woohoo! Yeah, hey! Oh, Meta, you're so fine, you're so fine, you blow my mind. Hey, Meta! Hey, Meta! Oh, Meta, you're so fine, you're so fine, you blow my mind. Hey, Meta! Hey, Meta! Oh, Meta, you're so fine, you're so fine, you blow my mind. Hey, Meta! Oh, Meta, while a pity you don't understand. You take me by the heart when you take me by the hand. Oh, Meta, you're uncapped, can't you organize? It's groups like you, Metas! Oh, what you do, Meta, do, Meta, don't break my heart, Meta. Oh, Meta, while a pity you don't understand. You take me by the heart when you take me by the hand. Oh, Meta, you're uncapped, can't you organize? It's groups like you, Metas! Oh, what you do, Meta, do, Meta, don't break my heart, Meta. <coughs> I apologize. Moving on. Well, in the town forums there's a heck load of chatter going on, which is a good thing, but I think this video has gone on long enough. So I'm going to end it here, but I'm still going to do my citizen highlight. Now, who's it going to be? I think it's going to be Redder. Oh, you didn't see that coming, did you? Well, Redder's still a little bit miffed because of his camping chances last season, but you know, it's season four. I don't think my curse will follow me over to this season. But you know, he is a survivalist, so as soon as Redder starts getting those, you know, 90 to 99% chances to survive, I'm gonna be all over him like a bad rash. If he survives and my curse has officially ended, if he dies, uh, don't hate me Red, you know, it's only a game mate. Thanks a lot guys and tune in for day two tomorrow.